objects. How do they work? Today we're going to be talking about how to retrieve data from objects, a couple of gotchas in there, and looking at what to do in a couple of kind of weird edge case scenarios. So let's dive in. Okay, so here I have defined an object literal. It has two properties, these key value pairs, as well as a key which has on it a function, which we call a method. So properties can be retrieved in one of two ways. We can use dot notation or we can use bracket notation, which I am going to get into after. So dot notation, what does this mean? Dot notation is used when we want to look up a property on an object that is literally called the property that we are looking for. In other words, we know the name of the key that we are looking for on this object. We know that this key is called fur, so we can use dot notation to say dog.fur, and that will return the string brown. Now this is considered the preferred syntax, and so I can assign it to a new constant here. Uh, now, what happens if I try to reference a property that doesn't exist? Let's say I try to reference dog.height which we know is not a key on my object. I want to console log out fur and see what this actually returns. So I'm going to view this output in my code runner terminal extension here, and I get undefined. So if we're not necessarily sure that a property exists on an object, one way we can prevent against this is by using the logical or operator. This is going to be our two pipes here. So if I can say, basically what I'm saying here is, if height does not exist on dog, then I want to return, let's say, 10. So in a case where height is undefined, I will now spit out 10. And this is basically part of a larger concept called creating defensive code. Now, what if we want to update a property on an object? Let's say we want to change eyes to be green. Well, I can do that doing something like dog.eyes equals green. And that will reassign it uh, because I know that eyes is an existing property on an object. Now, what would happen if we tried to do this with a property that does not exist on the object, let's say dog.weight equals 150, right? So it's not gonna update anything. There's nothing to update. It doesn't, it doesn't have that key already. What it will do is it will simply add a new property to the object. So now if I console log my dog, I will see that weight property on my object as well as the updated eyes to be green. And you can see my weight is here at 150. So to update a property, we can again reference the key. If that property name exists, it'll be reassigned. If it does not exist, it'll be created. Now, what if we don't necessarily know the name of the key that we're trying to reference, or for some reason we don't have access to that key, like the literal name of the key, for example, fur, eyes, or greed. And a pretty good example of this is if we had something like, something like this here. So take a look, I have an object declared here. Then I have a function. This function takes in an object and a name, and it will return object at that name. So when I call this function and I pass in a reference to my object scoreboard and a string, Chris, what is it going to do? Let's take a look at what's happening inside of the block scope of this function definition. So we are returning object at we say when we're using these brackets, we say at the name that we passed in. So it's gonna be scoreboard at string Chris. So whenever we don't necessarily know the literal name of the key that we're trying to look up, or we have a variable that points to it, we have to use bracket notation. So you can imagine maybe this function exists in a larger app and inside of the scope of this function, basically we wanna make this functionality reusable, right? So what would happen if I wanted to do the same thing again, I wanna duplicate this logic, but then I wanna actually look up Paul next time. Well, I have to make this lookup syntax dynamic. I have to make it reusable. So I use a variable to do that. And because I'm using a variable to do that, I have to use bracket notation. So here's sort of a gotcha to think about, something you might not have considered. In every object in JavaScript, it's implied, we know that even though it's not actually shown here that all keys on objects are actually strings. They are of type string. So what if we wanted to have a key on an object that had sort of a non-standard format? So what if we wanted to do something like price USD? 
Well, we can't use hyphens. We can't use these dashes inside of keys declared like this, but we can write our keys on objects as string literals with the apostrophes, the quotes. So we can do something like this and then this becomes a valid key. So my question to you watching is how would you retrieve the price in US dollars of this particular Bitcoin object. I will leave that up to you to figure out on your own. You can either pause the video or try it on your own time and keep an eye out for my next video where we will keep diving into more work with object-oriented programming in JavaScript. Okay, that's all I got for today. If you have found this helpful, feel free to give me a subscribe, send this video to a friend, and I will see you all again next time. Thanks for watching.